Hello all, welcome to my presentation. Today, my name is Mikala Vashitredi, pursuing my BTEC at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering and have chosen CSC specialization at Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning branch. So, today I am going to present you uh, a BWE concept called Average and RMS value of AC voltage or current. So let us dive deep into this concept. So these are the concepts we are going to discuss in this presentation. What is alternating current, waveform of AC current, describing sine wave of AC current, application and disadvantages of alternating current peak value of AC with following phasor figures and average value of alternating current with respect to RMS value of AC so these are the concepts which are we are going to be presenting in this presentation so let us dive deep into the concept so what is alternating current alternating current is an electric current which periodically reverses direction and changes its magnitude continuously with time in contrast to direct current which flows in one direction alternating current is the form in which electric power is delivered businesses and resides residences and it is form of electrical energy and consumes typically used when they plug kitchen appliances televisions fans and electrical lamps into a wall socket common source of dc power is a battery cell in a flashlight the abbreviations ac Alternating current and direct current are often used to mean simply alternating and direct respectively as when they modify current or voltage. So this is a brief introduction about alternating current. So let us see what is a waveform of alternating current. So the usual alternating current is most power powered electric circuits is a sine wave whose positive half period corresponds with positive direction of current and vice versa so we can see pulsating at positive end but direct variable is moving constantly whereas alternating current is in the form of a sine wave such that varying with time and velocity we irrespective of direct current and pulsating current which is at positive end so describing sine wave of alternating current we often need to describe an ac waveform in mathematical terms for this example we will use the common sine wave there are three parts of sine wave frequency amplitude and phase looking at just voltage we can describe a mathematical equation of sine wave v t equals vp sine 2 pi ft plus phi this gives us a formula which describes the sine wave of alternating current vt is our voltage as a function of time which means that our voltage changes as time changes vp is vp in short voltage at peak is the amplitude this describes the maximum voltage that our sine wave reach in either direction means that our 
voltage can be plus amplitude or minus amplitude volts so the sine wave basically indicates that our voltage will be in the form of periodic wave which is smooth oscillation around zero volt so let us now discuss further more about these sine waves 2 pi is constant that converts the frequency from cycles or in hertz to angular frequency f indicates the frequency of sine wave this is given in the form of hertz or units per second t is our dependent variable time as time varies our waveform varies <coughs> uh, phi describes the phase of sine wave phase is measured of how shifted the waveform is with respect to time it's often given as a number between 0 to 360 and measured in degrees because of periodic nature of sine wave it wave forms if wave form is shifted by 360 degrees it becomes the same wave form again it is shifted by 0 degrees so by observing the phase value we can say that up to 0 to 360 as we have till imagine an x axis and y axis plane up to 0 to 360 degrees so naturally the wave form when shifted to 360 it becomes as the wave form again when it is also shifted by 0 so some of the applications and advantages of ac are here alternating current is primarily utilized in transport and in industrial generation in reality practically every home on planets is powered by alternating current electric motors which are devices that convert electrical energy into mechanical energy refrigerators dishwashers garbage disposals and toaster ovens are a few examples of household appliances that rely on this alternating current is also employed in power distribution it can be easily convertible to other voltage with a simple transform transformer do not work with direct current so as we know in the transformer applications as in a working of either a generator something has to be varied now that varied can also be turned to be in voltage also so when an armature rotates this means the flux is flux cuts the conductors but in case of transformers as it is a static device there is no no intersection of flux or conductors so what happens when we pass alternating current this flux cuts the magnetic field of the primary of the secondary coil so this makes a difference in the potential which can cause current so when electricity is distributed at a high voltage losses are significantly minimized consider a 240 power source with a current of 4 amperes and a cable resistance of 1 watts are equal to volts times amps thus the power transmitted is 1000 watts the power loss is 12 into <coughs> r which is 16 watts so machines which can be run are here as listed below refrigerators um microwaves and let us say generators or motors also so yeah peak value of ac as we discussed earlier let us imagine an x axis and y axis such that 
maximum instantaneous value of either of positive or negative sine value sine wave alternation is peak value of alternating current or voltage uh, assuming that our alternating voltage is a sine wave with the initial phase of zero the positive peak value is above zero voltage baseline and exists at 90 degrees whereas its negative value is below zero voltage and exists at 270 degrees so the peak value of sine wave with initial phase of zero occurs at 90 to 90 and 270 degrees the positive peak value occurs at 90 degrees and negative peak value occurs at 270 degrees so here we can see a graph which indicates a uh, voltage maximum and voltage and so these can be clearly observed at 0 to 270 degrees this describes as peak value of ac so the peak value of ac is nothing but peak to peak value of an ac waveform is a valued measure valued measured from positive peak to negative peak voltages and currents in an a alternating current circuits are sometimes given in their peak to peak values because a pure sine wave with an average value of zero has equal to as equal values above and below the zero voltage baseline the positive and negative peaks are equal in magnitude when either the positive or negative peak value of voltage is known then peak to peak value of voltage can be calculated by applying the following formula v peak to peak equal to twice the times of voltage peak value here v p to p is nothing but volt ac or alternating peak to peak value vp is nothing but alternating peak value note formulas for voltage apply equal to alternating current with peak current and peak to peak current subsided for voltage peak to peak and voltage peak to peak so average value of ac the average value of an ac or alternating current voltage or current in an alternating circuit is mathematically mean of all instantaneous values in a sine wave for certain alternating current applications the average value of a sine wave is either voltage or current can be represented when a sine signal is symmetric with respect to x-axis we get an average value of zero when the average value above the baseline is averaged with average value below the baseline in these cases we might use the average value of one half cycle or one alternation of sine wave either a positive or negative half alternations can be used so here is a basically here is basically a graph which is depicted the average value of ac so here here we can see i average is zero for whole cycle and average current is basically 0 0.636 im which is which is negative at the negative half which is minus 0 0.36 sorry 636 and the peak value at im and negative at im so these negatives may vary because uh, at 90 
at 180 degrees exactly we can observe a clear transition which is from positive half cycle to negative half cycle so here is a brief description about average voltage of a sine wave is average of all instantaneous values for one alteration this is if the voltage of sine function were added for each degree from 0 to 180 degree with the sum divided by 180 degree an approximation of average value would be calculated the value of average voltage is equal to the instantaneous peak value multiplied by factor of 0 0.636 uh, the average voltage can be calculated by applying the formula v average equal to v peak i mean voltage peak into 0 0.636 v average equals average value of one half cycle v peak equals peak value 0 0.636 equals conversion factor of peak voltage to average voltage so here is an rms value or root mean square value so here we can see the rms value of an alternating current or voltage gives us the equivalent dc current or voltage value that produces the same heat effect as original alternating waveform when applied to a purely resistive load when calculating the rms or root mean square value the peak value of current or voltage sine wave is divided by square root of 2 by doing that a current sine wave can be calculated by applying the below formula i root mean square current root mean square equals peak value of current into square root here uh, IRMS equal to current RMS value, IP equals peak current value, root 2 equal 1.414. So this gives us root mean square value. So this can be used in many applications when solving an AC problem or calculating a root mean square of a whole circuit these formulas can be used as an application so here <coughs> so since the reciprocal value of 1.414 is 0 0.707 the rms value of current sine wave can also be calculated by applying such formula when calculating voltage sine waves VRMS is substituted for IRMS voltage root mean square for current root mean square. So here is a small graph we can see versus I current mean value such that uh, IRMS can be shown at the positive end such that 0 0.707 as IM is peak. So I hope you enjoyed this session and also these formulas and sums are going to be helpful when we solve various problems on transformers such that such that uh, transformers and also for calculating short circuit and open circuit problems these problems these formulas can be really much helpful for you so i hope i hope you enjoyed this session and thank you for listening to this